And hey, welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. And we are now joined by the director of this film, Dreams from My Real Father, which goes through not really the birth certificate issue, but the fact that we don't even know who Obama's father real is, or who his real father is, but Joel Gilbert makes some really amazing claims in here that his father is Frank Marshall Davis, the renowned communist writer. So we now welcome to the show, Joel Gilbert. Joel, how are you doing today? Hey, thanks for having me tonight. Well, uh, you contacted me last week saying you guys are going to have some big breaking news coming up, and it's on your website now, which is obamasrealfather.com. And why don't you go through that? It's going to premiere on World Net Daily in a couple hours. Why don't you just take us through that? Sure. Uh, well, in addition to the film came out a few months ago, uh, we've been shipping it, and it's been on Amazon official release since July 24. But my investigation has continued, and I've received a lot of additional information. Uh, the premise of the film, of course, is uh, documenting, presenting evidence that the uh, Kenyan father, that Barack Obama sold himself to America on this uh, idea that he was the multicultural ideal because his father was a goat herder from Kenya, and therefore he would bring people together. Uh, we've proven this in the film, Dreams of My Real, fa Real Father, to be false. Uh, the evidence shows that Obama has a deeply disturbing family background, that his real father was Frank Marshall Davis, the Communist Party USA uh, propagandist and former Soviet agent who raised and indoctrinated Obama by his own admission from age 9 to 18. Uh, and the Kenyan was simply a sham marriage to cover this up. Obama found out about it as a child and then used this in his political career to hide his Marxist political foundation. So the new information that came out of Hawaii and also uh, from some archives is twofold. Number one, uh, we have from the Honolulu Police Department archives that I obtained from retired Honolulu Police Department uh, detectives is a photo of Frank Marshall Davis's house uh, from 1952 that was raided in a vice squad raid uh, because it was uh, engaging in, in vice activities. They arrested a number of sailors there. Uh, Davis called it the Negro Elks Club. That was the club that, that was being run there at the time and there were a number of arrests. And this shows a history of very seedy activity going on at, at that house and, uh, and the likely involvement of, of Davis in this type of activity. Uh, next, we have new letters written by Davis in his own handwriting that emerged from archives uh, regarding the book called Sex Rebel Black. He wrote a, uh, a book widely acknowledged under a pseudonym of Bob Green, uh, detailing 30 years of nefarious activities in Hawaii, uh, numerous uh, affairs with underage uh, children under the age of 17, 18. Uh, now, in that book, of course, there's uh, five or six pages detailing an affair with a girl named Anne. goes into great detail, and we think, and I've always thought that this was uh, probably Anne Dunham, Obama's mother, and this helped to chronicle the intimate relationship between Obama's mother and Davis. Uh, in addition to that, we have a number of photos that Davis took of Ann Dunham that came out in men's magazines, and some of those are in the film, and a lot of them are on the website as well. She took these Betty Page type of photos. So we have evidence of the intimate relationship between uh, Davis and Obama's mother, and then, of course, from age 9 to 18, we have Davis playing a major role in Obama's life, uh, helping to raise him. We think those were all parental visits, and that... Well, obviously, Obama was indoctrinated into this Marxist ideology, and that's how he showed up at age 18 at Occidental College, admittedly, as a, a committed revolutionary Marxist. But in the new letters that just came out, uh, Davis admits in his own handwriting that, he, number one, he was the author of Sex Rebel Black. Number two, he says it's a completely autobiographical and all nonfiction. So this is confirmed in his own handwriting because some of uh, Obama's supporters have tried to maintain that this book was somehow fictional. But now we have Davis actually confirming in his own handwriting that it, it is an autobiography, and that lends further uh, support to the idea that uh, the girl described as Anne is likely Anne Dunham. And we have all the photos as well to back that up. And he also mentions that she's the Anne from, an Anne from Seattle, correct? Is that... Correct. There's Anne from Seattle. He talks about the family from Seattle. Uh, it's just one more 
in the chain of evidence uh, to show that there was uh, very likely an intimate relationship between Davis and Obama's mother. And then the fact that uh, Obama was raised by Davis from age nine really helps put it all together. We know that Kenyon was not the real father. Uh, all of Obama's story from his book, Dreams from My Father, has been proven to be false. Obama claims that when he was three years old, the Kenyon went to Harvard, and that's what broke up the family of improbable love. And Obama, you know, sold himself to America on this whole concept. Uh, in fact, his mother went to the University of Washington in Seattle three weeks after Obama was born, while the Kenyon remained in Hawaii. Now, the reason I always call him the Kenyon is because when people say Barack Obama Sr., I say that's not true. There was no Obama Sr. because there was no Obama Jr. They intentionally called Barack Obama Barack Obama II, which means another person. If it was junior, that would be son of, and then we'd have a senior. Mm -hmm. So we have a Kenyan foreign exchange student that was uh, uh, agreed to the sham marriage to cover up this illicit affair, uh, which uh, everyone benefited from. Uh, Ann Dunham had a legitimate child. The Kenyan applied for uh, a work permit and to extend his visa for a PhD. Now, if he was really the father, he would have just applied for a uh, a green card and citizenship if he was really married to, wanted to be married to this woman. But he had, of course, uh, a, a wife and two children in Kenya. And when he first applied for this extension of his visa, the, even the INS didn't think it was real. They questioned it. Uh, but he did get the temporary benefit. Frank Marshall Davis was able to hide this from his wife. He was married with five children. So it, it benefited everyone at the time. Uh, the evidence shows from Obama's own writing, he said that he found his birth certificate when he was 12 years old. So that indicates he obviously knew about this. And in his adult life, he tried very hard to cover up the existence and relationship to Davis because once the biological connection is established, it would then make you look at the ideological connection, how Davis became Obama's ideological father uh, and gave him a Marxist political foundation. So my film, Dreams from My Real Father, uh, shows that Obama really has been pursuing the dreams from his real father, who is a uh, Marxist ideologue and Soviet agent, rather than the dreams of a, of a Kenyan goat herder. And uh, that's how Obama misdirected everyone away from this very, very dark reality and this deeply disturbing uh, family background which would reveal his true plans for America. Well, and on top of that, if you look at the video, I mean, the first 15 minutes, it shows pictures of Davis, pictures of Obama. These guys look almost exactly alike. They have the same type of nose until Obama got his nose fixed. Um, they have the same type of mannerisms, the same type of skull shape. Uh, they speak in the same type of cadence. So you can tell that, this, he, that Obama definitely has connection to Frank Marshall Davis, and beyond that, the pictures you show of, of the lady that we think is his mother in the movie, he, she's on the same couch that Davis is later doing interviews on later. So it, there's definitely connections there that cannot be overlooked at this point. Yeah, I've been in the house. I've established all the connection between the mother and Davis. And it's clear that uh, when Obama referred to Davis 22 times in his autobiography, Dreams from My Father, he refers to him, it's 2,500 words over three continents, over three decades, he's always talking about Frank and how much Frank influenced him. And uh, what's interesting is the audio book that came out only in 2005. Remember, Dreams from My Father, 1995. He's thinking of running for mayor of Chicago one day. 2005, he's running for Senate, probably thinking of running for president. And Obama himself is the voiceover narrator for the audio book of Dreams from My Father. And guess what? Frank Marshall Davis is completely wiped out. Frank is removed. Every single reference to Frank is gone. So this is a pattern of document forgery, document manipulation uh, to remove Obama's connection to Frank Marshall Davis. I showed a few weeks ago, we spoke with Alex on the website. We had a breaking news page of this mysterious black hand of Frank Marshall Davis that they accidentally left in a childhood photo of Obama 
and they photoshopped in his mother. So his mother is a thin white female, and she has the, the hand of a black male, very obvious, and we compared it to Davis, and it looks a lot like Davis's hand, but it's not Ann Dunham's hand. So people talk about the birth certificate recently. Mm -hmm. they, showed, they showed how, uh, what I, my information was also that they did not put a father when Obama was born. It was left blank, father unknown. And the sheriff's office confirmed that they had also come to that conclusion. So Obama has engaged in a pattern of document forgery to hide his deep ideological and biological connection to Frank Marshall Davis, which the American people were given this knowledge would have found Obama unacceptable. So this is the misdirection he's been engaged in for several years. And it's time for the uh, media and everyone to demand that Obama come clean, tell what his political foundations are, tell the real story of his family background, not this false story that he's been promoting, and talk about his real agenda for America, which I believe is the deadly Marxist dreams of Frank Marshall Davis. Right. Yeah, you're not claiming this. All you're doing is taking Obama's words from his book, Dreams of My Real Father, where he mentions Frank all those number of times, covering over 2,500 pages of text. And he's mentioning this guy, how he's always getting advice from him. He's getting nurtured. So not only is he a biological father, as you claim, uh, to a communist, he's also being mentored by this guy heavily. But he wants to hide it so much, he doesn't mention him in the audio book. And I would, I would ask people to go out there and get that audio book and try to find. There's an instance where, where you say where, where he mentions he's out with three people in the book, and one of them's Frank, and in the audio book, he just admits Frank's name. Yeah, Frank's name is omitted in large sections and small sections everywhere Frank is removed. Now, don't forget, Frank is one of the main characters of the book. That's the guy he mentions more than anyone, and they remove him. So uh, Obama has been trying very hard using lies, misdirection, anything to hide his relationship to Davis, because if he had to tell the truth about it, then all this Marxist rhetoric that we hear from Obama the top 1% are, are, are oppressing everybody. Uh, the rich don't pay their fair share. If you have a business, you didn't build it. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the classic Marxist rhetoric that Davis uh, learned in Chicago in the 30s and would have taught Obama that there are some evil straw man who's preventing the masses from, from succeeding, that's keeping them down, and that the masses can never have upward mobility. They're stuck here because of evil straw men. That's the rhetoric that people would tie together and say, wait a minute, this is, this is uh, insane talk from uh, rantings of uh, you know, early 1900s Lenin and Marx and these guys. Uh, it's not appropriate. It doesn't fit the reality of America. In America, you can work, you can get a job, you can start a business, you can uh, be successful just like Obama has, just like Michelle Obama has. But they have to tell you a false narrative. They have to say you can't buy food, you can't get a loan, you can't go to school, life is impossible. They create this, impo tell the people that everything is impossible. Only government can provide you the milk. You know, pray to Chavez and the milk will appear. We had a, we had a guy, um, uh, one of our IT guys here says, they actually do this in the schools with Chavez. They say, pray for milk, pray to God for milk, and milk doesn't appear. And they say, pray to Chavez for milk. Suddenly the milk appears. And I can't think of one place that communism has worked for the little guy where it's supposedly, it's gonna always help the little guy, but I can't name one instance where it has helped the little guy. It only helps those elites way up in the top and those business owners way up in the top who who are oppressing people anyway and they're never going to be working towards you know humanity as a common goal well obama has a false narrative and that's what's so dangerous it's uh, demagogic that you can say to people that the rich people don't pay their fair share now he knows this is not true because we have a progressive tax system the Upper income levels pay 35, 38, up to 40 percent, plus their property tax, everything else. Whereas the lower you go, you pay less and less or pay nothing. So when you promote your campaign on a lie, anyone can Google this and find out that the rich do pay more than their fair share. But he, it's demagoguery to go around saying such a thing. Uh, he also claims that uh, he's helping, wants to help middle class families. But the reality is that socialist economies 
do not have a middle class. Right. The, the middle class is eliminated. It's destroyed because their employers are hounded and taxed out of business. The middle class's health care will be given away to poor and illegals. And the middle class retirement will evaporate into a bankrupt socialist state and will be left with one lower class, as is the history of Marxism and socialism, one big lower impoverished class and a political elites that control the wealth. And in between that, you have your brute class. You have the oppressors, you have the police arms, you have the, the Pol Pots that are, that are sending out their minions to basically keep people working in the fields, maintain the slavery, go after anybody who might look intelligent. Uh, and that's what, that's what communism leads to. It leads to mass death and genocide in the end. Well, you don't have to look very far. You can look at the history of East and West Germany, North and South Korea, two very similar ethnically historic societies that were divided between free market and communism and Marxism. And the results are that one in one society, it led to economic ruin and physical destruction of the people. In the other society, the free markets led to prosperity and wealth and wealth expansion. So this is not uh, a new science that we have to figure out if the Marxist model is going to work in America. We know it's inappropriate. We know it doesn't work. We know it's disastrous. Uh, but my film, Dreams from My Father, unravels the whole Obama story because he has spent years misdirecting people that he's a uniter who's going to bring people together because his father was a goat herder, and therefore he's going to be this uh, great savior. Well, in fact... Uh, people voted for him because they said, well, he has an inspiring family story. I, I want to vote for this guy. And they liked that Obama background story. But the reality is he has a deeply, deeply disturbing family background of a father who was a Communist Party propagandist, a Soviet agent, and a Marxist who indoctrinated Obama. And his mother was uh, involved with Davis, and he's hidden this as well. So more and more people are seeing this film, and we thank Infowars.com, and people should go to their website to purchase the film. And please watch this, and you'll understand the whole history. Everybody says, finally, you put the pieces together, and we can understand that when Obama says fundamentally transforming America, he means eliminating the middle class and holding on to power for a Marxist elite. Right. Now let's go into some of the... Um I, I guess the media blackout that has accompanied your film, because you would think people would want to go, hey, let's at least vet this information. Let's put it out there. Let's look at it and let's make, you know, some educated decisions for ourselves. But what we're seeing, uh, you know, total media blackout. I don't find your stuff anywhere except on WorldNet Daily, maybe a couple other conservative websites, uh, Infowars.com. You were actually at the press club uh, in D.C. giving a speech. How, how well did that go? I mean, you were telling people, look, you got a Pulitzer right here if you just put out this information. Exactly. I was at the National Press Club. I addressed the mainstream media. They were there, Washington Post, uh, Newsweek. A lot of these guys were all there. And I reminded them of something called the journalist creed. Journalist creed is like the Hippocratic Oath for journalists. It says that uh, journalists must be fair, they're trustees for the public, that there's a single standard of truth, that suppression of the news is indefensible. So I read them their own journalist creed, which was written on the... Uh, on the wall in the, in the lobby in bronze, and I explained that if all the doctors decided not to pay attention to the Hippocratic Oath, everybody would get sick. So I said that because they are not adhering to the journalist creed of honesty, that we're all becoming infected with Marxism, that they are suppressing the news and they've been defending Obama's false narrative. And it was inexcusable and indefensible that the public looks to the media to report the truth. And if they don't hear the truth, they assume that what Obama is telling them is, must be true. Uh, so this is why it's so important for the media to be an independent force, unafraid to tell the truth. Unfortunately, the media has become corrupt. They've become ideologically uh, uh, connected to the administration. Or they may just be somehow too embarrassed to admit how badly they didn't do their job before, and maybe it's too hard for them to admit. Whatever their motivation, it is indefensible. And I told them this at the National Press Club, and you can see my press conference as well 
on the uh, Obama's real dot com website. Right. And, and so what's going on in Ohio? You guys have uh, basically bought a bunch of these copies that you're giving out to these swing states, Ohio being one of them. Tell us about your plan there where you're, you're trying to get the movie into the hands of people before this election. Well, we did send out several hundred thousand copies uh, nationwide, including Ohio, to try to as a really publicity uh, measure to try to get people on the street on the ground, as Obama says, from the ground up, from the bottom up to start talking about the film and calling their media and talking to the representatives about this shocking information. It, it should be the number one Pulitzer Prize winning story of the young century, like Watergate. You know, it's like, oh my God, this guy told us he was somebody else and we voted for him. So uh, several hundred thousand have gone out. Uh, we've sold many thousands and we're hoping uh, obviously to sell many more in InfoWars, you can buy the DVD. And uh, we've gotten tremendous response. And typically, when someone sees the film, they want to show it uh, to someone else. So it is a, uh, a shocking narrative that the First Amendment, where there's free speech and people can, can publish and talk about what they want, is being suppressed. Uh, we put out an ad. We wanted to put an ad in the, uh, I'll show it to you for the, this is for the, this is a newspaper, full page ad. I'm showing it to you there. Full page ad for uh, USA Today, Washington Post, or New York Times. All three, all three refused to publish this advertisement. Wow. We had cash money in advance, you know, Obama deception unmasked, <laughs> Obama's real father, and the whole advertisement. We're going to put this up on our website uh, soon, but uh, all three of these so called bastions of American Free Press, the Washington Post that uncovered Watergate, uh, the New York Times, USA Today, America's national newspaper, suppresses the truth, as does Newsmax, Newsmax.com. We paid for an advertising banner email campaign with Newsmax. They canceled it at the last second. We said, why'd you cancel it? They said, well, we don't want to be seen as conservative. We want to move to the center. We're trying to get the audience from the center. So I told the guy at, from uh, Washington Post at the press club, I said to him, I said to him, did you know why Newsweek is not at this press conference? He said, why? I said, well, they're going out of business. They, they no longer have a magazine. And uh, Drudge Report is number one. And Newsmax is going out of business because Newsmax, for example, would not publish the Monica Lewinsky uh, information. You mean Newsweek, not Newsmax. I'm sorry, Newsmax. Yeah. Yeah. Newsmax, mag uh, Newsweek magazine, Newsweek magazine had the information on Monica Lewinsky, refused to publish it. Right. Drudge did publish it. Today, Drudge is number one. Newsweek is out of business. And that's how a lot of people discovered Drudge, just by him having the cojones to put that information out there. You know, win, lose, or draw, whatever it was, at least he put it out there and let us decide how we feel about it. Well, that's the very definition of journalism. I mean, it doesn't take... People write me emails and say, you've got a lot of guts. I said, it doesn't take much guts just to tell the truth. Yeah. The, your information, since when did telling the truth and reporting the news for people to look at and consider, since when did that become so, so difficult and so hard to do? Well, I can tell you that with you know, USA Today, uh, Washington Post, New York Times, Newsmax, they will not print this information. They won't allow it to be seen by the public. They're engaged in censorship rather than giving information. And I think all those publications are in trouble if they don't uh, allow the news to be to reach uh, the public. Well, there was a quote, and this is on a, a Time magazine, and it's a quote of a CIA director. I, I can't remember his name right offhand, but he said, anybody in the media of any significance is owned by the CIA. And that's, that just says it right there. And they're protecting their boy, and they're never going to show this stuff. This is, this is something that, that blows, because the birth certificate is something they could say, well, you know, we could poke holes at this, and we could all play these word games, and we'll never know the truth because they're never going to open up these records. But, but what you're uncovering now, it goes way beyond the birth certificate. It really digs into who this man is and who his ideological and biological father are, and it's, it's an amazing film. I've seen it twice already, and each time I get more out of it because you, get, you catch those things that you didn't catch the first time, and it just 
you know, it really blows me away. So uh, what, what are you guys going to be doing in the future with uh, Dreams from My Real Father? Uh, well, we're starting to set up some screenings around the country. Uh, I'm continuing to talk about it on the news and radio as much as possible every day. I'm continuing my investigation. I've got uh, several lines of inquiry still going on that are being released as breaking news items on the website. And uh, we're just going to keep telling the truth and letting people know uh, that Obama should be voted for this time on his merits of who he really is, not on the, his uh, false story of this uh, Kenyan goat herder. And he's a guy that will bring people together. It's a very different reality. And the gap between Obama's public narrative and the reality is very, very big. And the news media's job is to tell us the truth so that we know who he is. And I did this job for them. And uh, anyone can see the film, and as I told them, the Pulitzer Prize can be yours. Yeah. You put it on a silver platter. I mean, it's a slam dunk if somebody publishes this on a mainstream media outlet. Because, But the, I, I think they're, they're definitely afraid to. There would be some hardcore, uh, some hardcore tyranny raining down on whoever does publish this in the mainstream realm but i gotta hand it to you it is a it is a great film and um i think everybody needs to go to infowarshop.com get a copy have your own screening pass it out to people um i don't you don't necessarily uh tell people to make copies of it but how do you feel about them showing it on access television you just want them to contact you yeah they have to contact us for each market so we can coordinate it uh to get permission uh, we're also doing some screenings of our own around the country. We have people hosting screenings. So we coordinate everything from Obamasrealfather.com. Oh, okay, Obamasrealfather.com. And how, how, how big is this is getting? How big are the grassroots? How many people are coming to you saying we want to show this? I mean, in your estimation. We have several hundred uh, requests. A lot of screening events are between 30 and 80 people, it seems like, with a couple around 100. Uh, doing a public screening in a theater we have a few people arranging those as we speak, but it seems to be a real grassroots thing of small groups of people that uh, will watch it together and then uh, order more DVDs and then go and do another another uh, group. It's uh, just uh, amazing the amount of people that are, are getting in on it because they know that the mainstream media will not report anything negative about Barack Obama. And that is... Uh, uh, just uh, unjustifiable suppression of the news. And I thank you folks for having me on. Well, we surely appreciate you have, having you on. It's, uh, these are like little seeds, you know, that you plant out there. Each one of these little DVDs, and that's the beautiful thing about a DVD. You can just scatter them to the winds. People will take a look at this and go, wait a minute. This guy, you just got to look at the cover. And you go, wow, Barack looks exactly like this other dude. He doesn't even look like... Barack Obama the first and I mean it's it really is an amazing film so I, I'd, I'd encourage people to go and get it Joel uh, do you have anything else you want to add uh, just uh, please stay tuned uh, to to our website and keep checking infowars.com as well uh, we're going to have continuing developments and breaking news all the way through the end of the year and uh, I want to tell everybody how much I appreciate all their uh, emails of support and uh, just let's keep the grassroots information network going because the uh, mainstream media is uh, a useless nothing but a useless reality show totally agree joel gilbert thank you very much for coming on the show today i'll tell you what this is a seed right here you plant this it's going to grow people are going to see it people are going to wake up because you know a lot of people were duped a lot of people bought into the narrative and the mainstream media was just so happy to run with that narrative of him being the son of a Kenyan goat herder. And we now know, I mean, you watch the film, it's, it's all there. You see his mom in, in these provocative poses on a couch that uh, Frank Marshall Davis is later giving interviews on. You get to see the writings of Frank Marshall Davis. I mean, this man is scary. He wants to take all the money from the middle class and give it basically to the elites while everybody else lives in squalor that to him is a perfect system because he would be one of the guys at you know from being a general in this he would be one of the guys on the top so he would like nothing more than to see the destruction of the united states as we know it so get a copy it's dreams from my real father it's on infowarshop.com uh we've got uh, at least over over uh, 1,500 of these left in stock. I just checked with the guys today. So get your copy now. Get it out there. Let's let's make some change happen for the better in our 
own political paradigm here. And uh, we got it on sale for fourteen ninety five. You know, I don't know what more else to say. This is a seed and it needs to be planted. So plant it in your DVD. Have some viewing parties. Let's start waking some people up, especially your Democratic friends who who try to believe they're good hearted. They really want to believe that, you know, our first black president's a good guy. But unfortunately, we were sold a bunch of lies. So with that, we're going to sign off for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow. Alex promises he'll be doing the show three days this week. So we'll have uh, at least Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Alex Jones in studio taking over the reins for the InfoWars Nightly News. And with that, I'm Rob Dew, your host for tonight, and we'll see you next time.